In this video, we are going to discuss about noise in AM receivers using envelope detection. The contents of this video includes introduction to noise, how to find channel signal to noise ratio, output signal to noise ratio, and the figure of merit. As we know, noise is any unwanted signal that actually interferes with the required signal. The noise characteristics of any modulation system is evaluated by a parameter known as figure of merit. Figure of merit is related with signal to noise ratio. If the signal to noise ratio is high, the meaning will be signal power will be more when compared to the noise power. Then it will be the good system. Figure of merit is actually the ratio of output signal to noise ratio to the channel signal to noise ratio. If the figure of merit is higher, then the system has a better noise performance and the effect of noise is less. Actually, the figure of merit may be equal to 1, less than 1 or greater than 1. It depends on the type of modulation we are going to use. Figure of merit actually depends upon the signal to noise ratio. In communication system, we are having transmitter, channel and the receiver. The signal to noise ratio of the channel actually depends on the transmitter and the channel. So it is the ratio of average power of the modulated signal to the average power of the channel noise in message bandwidth. The output signal to noise ratio depends upon the receiver. It is the ratio of average power of the demodulated signal to the average power of the noise. Now we are going to discuss about noise in AM receivers using envelope detection. AM contains carrier and double sidebands. So it is also called as double sideband full carrier. Under this topic we are going to determine what is channel signal to noise ratio, what is output signal to noise ratio and what is the figure of merit. We know that AM signal is given by S of t which is equal to AC into 1 plus MA M of t cos 2 pi FCT. So the first term AC into cos 2 pi FCT it corresponds to the carrier and the second term AC into MA M of T cos 2 pi FCT that corresponds to the lower sideband and upper sideband where this M of T corresponds to the message signal and MA corresponds to the modulation index which is used to determine the percentage of modulation. To find channel signal to noise ratio we want to find the average power of the signal and the average power of the noise. To find the power Normally we will use the formula V square by R. If you are taking RMS value, it is V by root 2 the whole square divided by R. So which is equal to V square by 2R. Here we are taking R is equal to 1. So the power we can represent as V square by 2. The average power of the carrier compound is AC square by 2. Next we are going to find what is the average power of this side bands. That is AC square, MA square into P divided by 2. This P corresponds to the average power of the message signal M of T. Average power of the AM signal is average power of the carrier plus average power of the sidebands. If you are taking AC square by 2 outside, it will be equal to AC square by 2 into 1 plus MA square into P. Now we are going to find what is the channel noise power we are going to assume the channel is a white Gaussian channel. So the noise is uniformly distributed over the entire band of frequencies. The power spectral density of the white noise is denoted by N0 by 2. The total noise power is obtained by multiplying the noise power spectral density N0 by 2 with the bandwidth of this modulation. When we are taking double sideband full carrier, it is having carrier as well as upper sideband and lower sideband. So the bandwidth will be equal to twice FM. Here FM is represented by W. So the bandwidth will be equal to 2W. So the noise power is equal to power spectral density into the bandwidth. Bandwidth is be equal to 2W. So the noise power will be equal to W into N0. Now we have determined what is the signal power and what is the noise power. So we can find what is the channel signal to noise ratio. It is the ratio of modulated signal power to the average noise power of the channel. Using equations 1 and 2, 
the signal to noise ratio of the channel is given by AC square into 1 plus MA square into P divided by W into N naught. Now we are going to determine what is the output signal to noise ratio. For that we are going to take the receiver. The filter noise is represented in terms of its in-phase and quadrature components. The in-phase component is Na of t into cos 2 pi Fct. Quadrature component is represented by Nq of t sin 2 pi Fct. This we have taken from narrow band noise. This is the model of an AM receiver where the A modulated signal is passed through the channel. In the channel noise is added. At the receiver side we are having band pass filter which passes a band of frequencies and we will get X of T. So X of T it is a combination of AM signal and the noise. Then it is given to the envelope detector which will detect only the envelope of the signal X of T. That determines the original signal. So X of T which is equal to AM signal plus noise. AM signal is given by AC into 1 plus MA M of T cos 2 pi FCT. And the noise we are going to consider the narrow band noise which contains in phase component and quadrature component. In this step we are taking the cos terms together. So we are going to combine the first term and the second term. This is the phase of our high carrier to noise ratio. Here this term corresponds to the signal and this cor corresponds to the in phase component. So this x axis represents the cos term and this y axis represents the quadrature component. So the resultant is given by this one. The signal x of t is given to the envelope detector which will detect the envelope of the signal which is the original signal. Suppose if you are having a signal a cos theta plus b sin theta the envelope will be equal to root of a square plus b square. Similarly here also the first term magnitude square plus second term magnitude square the whole power 1 by 2. When the average carrier power is large compared to the average noise power this term will be greater when compared to the noise terms Na of t and Nq of t. So the first term will be greater when compared to the second term. So square root of the first term will be equal will be approximately equal to AC into 1 plus MA M of t plus Na of t. This first term is AC. Second term is AC into MA M of t plus Na of t. This term corresponds to signal and this term corresponds to noise. The constant term AC or DC term is ignored. It is removed by blocking capacitor. So Y of t is approximately equal to AC into MA M of t plus NA of t. To find output signal to noise ratio, we have to find what is the average power of the signal and what is the average power of the noise. Average power of the signal will be equal to AC square MA square into P divided by 2 where P is the average power of the message signal. The noise power is given by power spectral density N0 by 2 into the bandwidth. Bandwidth is equal to twice W because it is a double sideband full carrier system. So the signal to noise ratio of the output is equal to AC square MA square into P divided by 2 divided by N0 by 2 into 2W. This is equal to AC square MA square P divided by 2 into N0 W. Now we can find what is the figure of merit. It is the ratio of signal to noise ratio or the output to the signal to noise ratio of the channel. We have determined signal to noise ratio of the channel in equation 3 and signal to noise ratio of the output in equation 4. Using that and simplifying the common terms we will get ma square into p divided by 1 plus ma square into p. For this double sideband full carrier system that is a AM receiver if you are giving the values the figure of merit is always less than unity. The noise performance of the full AM receiver is always inferior to that of the double sideband suppressed carrier receiver. This is due to the wastage of transmitter power results from transmitting the carrier as a component of the AM wave. Thank you for watching this video.